flounder are one of my favorite fish to catch. And as a matter of fact, they're actually running right now. The winter migration is in full effect and many anglers rush to many of the coastal shorelines in search for their next best doormat. Unfortunately, <laughs> the competition is insane. Everyone is using the exact same rig, the same lures, they're fishing the same locations. I mean, if you look at the Seawolf shoreline, that is crazy. Everybody's shoulder to shoulder. You don't want to fish in that. But luckily, I made this video just for you, to give you the competitive edge over everyone else. So here are the top 10 things you must know about flounder to be successful. And after this video, you'll learn the unique tactics that work and info that others won't tell you. Before we continue, if you want to be elite all year round, you want to catch flounder, reds, specks, everything. If you want to take your fishing game to an elite level, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notifications. Follow my Facebook page or Instagram, Beach Bomber Fishing, for some of the crispiest fishing content Ooh, out here. This is a big one. One last thing. These tactics work year round, by the way. They're not only good for the run, they also work all over the US, not only in Texas, since I'm a Texas YouTuber. All right, let's get started. Number 10, use a bait caster, especially when you're fishing artificial lures. Flounder like to hug walls, get into crevices, and lay in areas that require precise and accurate cast. See, check this out. Flounder like to hide in such areas. Check this out, this is another example right here. There's flounder right under this little bridge. I cast my lure in there. Actually, this is actually a night video here, and this gets us to our number nine tip. Yes, against popular opinion, they say flounder don't bite at night. That's that's a lie. They always bite at night. So me being an anti-social fishing club, I don't like to fish with people. I especially do not like to fish with a ton of people around me. So during the flounder run in Texas, every shoreline in Galveston is loaded with people. You know, and I absolutely yes. hate it, and so do a lot of people. So what did I do about it? I learned to fish for flounder at night. You know, at first it was pretty hard. Uh, there was very limited info on the internet in regards to flounder fishing at night. So through countless hours, I was finally able to figure it out. Flounder are hunting by sight and are ambush predators. Now that being said, flounder are suckers for glow in the dark lures, especially if they smell like I like to use AM fishing lures. In my opinion, they are one of the brightest glow in the dark lures out there. And they also smell really nasty. <laughs> They offer blue, green, and red glow. You know, and there's way more to flounder fishing at night, but I mean way more. But this is one of the most important aspects of night fishing. I will make a separate video in regards to night fishing, okay? But of course, most importantly, use glow in the dark lures at night. Now we get to number eight. Now this tip is probably gonna be quite polarizing, maybe not very popular, but quit using shrimp. Now shrimp is expensive and it's extremely short-lived. And you know, when I used to fish with shrimp, everything got to it first. Specs love shrimp. And those little pesky, overly aggressive sand trout love them too. Oh, and guess what else likes them? Hardheads, gaff tops, pinfish, everything. If you want to weed out these species and increase your odds, use much more livelier baits such as finger mullet and mud minnows. This will decrease the amount of time you will waste landing everything but flounder. Time is flounder. That time you spend on hooking an unnecessary trash can slam, hardheads, Guess what's going on? A flounder swimming right by you. And what are you doing? Messing with a hardhead. Now speaking of bait, which leads into number seven. If you're gonna be using bait to catch flounder, there is no better bait than mud minnows. Flounder absolutely love mud minnows. But the real question is, where do you get the mud minnows from? Now you can easily catch them in a brackish estuary with a minnow trap. You can use a $15 fry bill minnow trap, place a crushed crab or some bacon in there, and about come back about in an hour or so and if you're in the right spot you'll have a ton of them 
bait your minnow with a kale hook for increased odds. Now that is another thing is when you're using bait, I suggest using a kale hook. I've had much more better luck with hook sets with kale hooks. Alright, so enough about bait, let's go to number 6. This is a very very important tip. Fish the tides. Flounder love moving water and in my opinion, flounder are much more active during tidal movements than compared to slack tide. They also seem to be a little much more active during an outgoing tide. Number 5. Rigs. Yep, this is always a big question. And we all know that tandem rigs work. They allow you to use two different types of lures, different colors, whatever combination you'd like. But, did you know, spinnerbaits are extremely deadly for flounder. Spinnerbaits are perfect option when the water is turbid and dirty. The deeper the water, the heavier the spinnerbait. Just slowly reel in across the bottom and bam, easy as that. Another thing is, when you're using a spinnerbait, when it's windy, especially in November, the wind starts to pick up, a spinnerbait is perfect. The extra vibration will attract flounder. Number 4. Tip your jigs. This is a type of hybrid fishing. If you use bait and lures, tipping your jigs is a deadly combination. You can combine the best of both worlds, stinky cut bait and moving lures. Sometimes tipping your jigs can make all the difference when you're fishing for flounder. This is especially true when you're fishing crowded areas during the flounder run. Number 3. Now this is one of the biggest debates in the great house of floundering. Setting the hook. Alright, so this is what I have to say about that. When you're fishing with bait, you can let them swallow the bait. Not too long though. Sometimes when you're using live bait, they don't usually fully swallow the bait immediately. So don't set your hook immediately. If you do, you basically snatch the bait right out of their mouths. Max 5 to 10 seconds. Anything larger than that, they're probably going to swallow the hook and you're going to gut hook. And unfortunately, you're going to weed out a lot of undersized flounder that way. But now, when I'm fishing with lures, I immediately set the hook. I don't let them swallow it. Take off with it, none of that. You'll notice that flounder will immediately spit out the lure. And you know what? They're not stupid. They can feel the difference between a real bait and a lure. They can taste it. They can see it. Trust me. Number two. Now we're getting to the real important tips. The real tips. Where do we find flounder? There's a phrase that goes something like this. 90 something percent of the fish are in 5% of the water. Well, that's true to a certain extent. Fish do migrate, they look for bait, so they're not always in the same spots. Now, although fishing spots are pretty important, the fish aren't always gonna be in those spots. That's why the following tip is amongst one of the most important tips on the list, structure. Flounder love structure. Where there is structure, there is flounder, guaranteed. You know, and I've caught many flounder in every single location that had structure. You can find flounder under piers, by the pilings, you can find them along docks, bulkheads, along the bottom of a jetty. They especially love deep drop-offs. You can also find them in extremely shallow areas. I'd like to mention that Google Maps is also your best friend. Go out and explore, and once you learn the structural preferences of flounder, you will always find them, you'll be successful. Well, here we are at number one. This is among the most controversial tips when it comes to floundering. Fishing spots. Yep, that's it. <laughs> the internet is a pot liquor's favorite paradise, trust me. Especially Facebook. The number one tip, the most important tip of them all. Find your own fishing spots. Look, let's just be flat out honest. No one is going to give you their secret flounder hole, especially over Facebook. Don't even, don't, don't even dare to ask on the internet, especially on a fishing forum for fishing spots. You're gonna get roasted and you'll probably deserve it. So the They're gonna roast you hard. <laughs> oh, yes. Those posts turn to turn into like a comedic slaughter fest. Honestly, they're very funny. Yep. If you've ever seen a, a roasting Facebook post from people you're that are good. just asking for spots, they're nice hilarious. Fun, they're gonna make you wish you'd never even asked. Now, let me tell you one thing though, straight up. A lot of us have spent several years of trial and error looking for these fishing spots. Don't ask me for spots. I'm not gonna give you any. Look, a lot of people get mad at me because I don't give away my fishing spots. They look, they think it's unfair and they feel like I'm hoarding up the fish. But see, here's what happens when you give away a spot. And I've made this mistake several times. Shame on me, several, not just once, but several. And from, from now on, I will never make it again. All right, I give away one spot. They swore to secrecy. They promised to never tell anyone. Guess what? He took his buddy. His buddy took his buddies. His buddies' buddies took their buddies. Their buddies' buddies' buddies took their buddies' buddies' buddies. And guess what? It's not a secret anymore. Now the spot is trashed. I'm not gonna give you any spots, but I will give you the basic foundation on how to find a fishing spot, all right? So sub tip number one to the spots. Google Maps is your best friend. 
you scroll around the area, look for spots that resemble structures that I mentioned above. If you see a spot on Google Maps, look at the structure around it. And three, go check it out. If you see a spot you like, just fish it. That's how all of us find our spots. I'm always on the hunt for spots. Some spots tend to dry out and I have to be on the hunt for the next flounder hole. Like I said, flounder are migratory. The flounder are never always going to be in the same spot. Look, and you know, I don't mean to be ugly or selfish. If I can put time and effort to find these fishing spots, so can you. Trust me, there is nothing more rewarding than finding your own flounder hole. You'll be the one catching what no one else is catching. And you will no longer be fishing with an extremely crowded fishing spot like at Seawolf Park. Sorry that I have to be so blunt, but that is the most important flounder fishing tip. Find your own spot. Don't rely on others, quit asking. Well, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video because this video is guaranteed to make you a lead AF. I especially hope that this video helps you land your next best personal flounder over 25 inches because there is nothing more satisfying than landing a big saddle blanket. You know, it's been a couple years since I've caught something that big. I think it's been like maybe four or five years since I've caught a big saddle blanket. But you know, I used all these tips to help me find those big flounder. If you know somebody that needs help fishing for flounder, that they're not good at it or they're just getting into it, show them this video. Help them just how I just helped you. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Let me add in a couple more notes. Another thing, I have just restocked the merch store with more stickers. The previously sold out stickers are now restocked. You can purchase single stickers or even a sticker pack. I will probably be releasing tees and hoodies very soon as well. Help me make more videos. You know what? YouTube isn't cheap. It takes some serious bankroll to keep up with the trends and technology. You know, and it takes cash to be a good YouTuber, right? One last thing. All these fishing areas that you see me fishing in this video are private property. You need special permission to fish any of these areas. Now that being said, if you get caught at any of these spots, besides Gallus and Fishing Pier, you will be charged with trespassing and you will get a hefty fine. Now unfortunately, there's been some people that have really gone to some crazy, crazy extent to find some of these fishing spots. And you know what happened to them? These are private property, they go and fish, the property owner doesn't know who they are, they call the police, and all of a sudden the police show up, and guess what? Trespassing ticket. That easy. Don't even try to fish any of these spots, because you will get caught, and you'll get a fat ticket. You don't want that. Alright, and I'm sorry for being so blunt, but that's just the truth. Alright, well thanks again, and I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much.